Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to calibrate your Endor 3 V2 with just using an SD card uh, without the need for Octoprint or Pronterface or hooking up anything to your um, printer. This will be quick and easy. Um, it, on my last video I talked about why I use the 100 millimeter uh, calibration print and uh, and why I don't like using the uh, 20 millimeter test cube uh, because of dimensional accuracy issues and all that so I, ca I kind of gave some background and some detail in that video but I didn't show you how to actually update it so this video um, I'll be I'll go over that and so I can show you how to do that all right before we get started you are gonna need a few tools you're gonna need a good set of calipers um, these I bought these from my local hardware store they're general Ultratech brand. I think uh, some very similar on Amazon, but make sure they're good quality because you want consistent measurements. Uh, you're going to need flush cutters. These you should have if you bought an Ender 3. They should come with a printer, and this wrench should come with a printer as well. And then a straight edge ruler that has at least uh, 10 <clears throat> centimeters or 100 millimeter measurement. These should be the only things you need to. Uh, to get through this video. Alright so we're gonna start off by setting the nozzle temperature to, to, to 200 degrees and I'm already at 200 and the way you do that is just go to control temperature nozzle temperature and then adjust it to 200. Once that's done you're gonna go over to your extruder and you're gonna remove the coupler and pull back your filament and uh, once your filament is pulled back, you're going to make a flush cut right at the wall of the extruder. So it's essentially pretty, pretty straight, straight flush cut. After you do that, you'll come to, you're going to go to prepare, move, extruder, and you're going to adjust this to 100 millimeters. Oops, I went over, but 0.1, that's not bad. All right, so now this is gonna extrude. Okay, once you've extruded 100 millimeters, go ahead and make another flush cut. And then now you have a 100 millimeter sample. You're gonna repeat the process five times. So go back to the extruder and then go to 200. And then you're gonna do this five times. So you should end up at 500 millimeters on the extruder. Here are the five pieces that I've extruded and they're all 100 millimeters. I've all made flush cuts on them and then now I'm gonna measure them. What I do is I just uh, set this against my straight edge ruler right at the very edge there. And that is, I believe, 99. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to measure all five and get an average measurement. Okay, so once I've measured out my five uh, extruded 100 millimeter pieces of filament, I measured them and they all came up at uh, 99. Actually, this is 99. I don't know why I wrote 95. But they all came out 99 and then, of course, averaged out to 99. And the formula for, check, for um, getting your E-steps is you're going to take the expected output which we sent command to the printer to print 100 millimeters the actual output was 99 millimeters and you're gonna multiply that by the current e-steps and to check your current e-steps you're gonna to go to control motion I think that means transmission ratio and transmission ratio extruder you're at 95 e-steps so that's what you currently have on the printer if you're 100% factory default Ender 3v2, you're going to have 95 uh, e-steps for, for your extruder. So we'll just go ahead plug that in, 95. So again, expected output divided by actual output times your current e-steps. And this is what you're going to update the printer to so that it is calibrated to output 100 millimeters uh, whenever you actually send a 100 millimeter extrusion command. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the computer, 
uh, and create the g-code file for updating the extruder e-step value. So go ahead and create a new text file anywhere on your computer and uh, you can name it anything I just named it calibration or extruder calibration um, and go ahead and open this file and what you're gonna type in is a g-code command m92 and then E for extruder and put your new E steps values that you calculated. You go ahead and save that. You can exit out of it. And then on your folder properties under the view tab, you're going to click file name extensions. And what that's going to allow you to do is you're going to see the actual extension of the file. So right now it's .txt. You're going to rename and change it to .gcode. And that converts it to a gcode uh, file. Just go ahead and click yes to uh, change it and that's all you need to do. Go ahead and save that to your um, uh, SD card, insert your SD card and then save it and, um, and then we'll go ahead and go back to the printer. Alright, once you got your file saved on your SD card, go ahead and insert it and you're going to go to Print, extruder calibration, you're going to wait for it to finish, it'll say continue, and then press continue. So what that just did, it just executed the g-code command that uh, we typed in, which was M92, and then your extruder, um, E for extruder, and then the E-step value. So if we go to control, motion, transmission ratio. You can see now that it's updated, but this only shows you to uh, the tenths place, so it doesn't show the uh, 0.95, just 9. Then what you're going to do here, go back, storage configuration, it's going to say settings stored. What that does, it saves it to the actual memory. And what I like to do is I like to turn off the printer, and then I turn it back on. And I double check that uh, the setting is still there, which it is. So now your E steps have been updated, and you should uh, be able to print 100 millimeters. Go back to temperature, set your nozzle 200. All right, once you're at 200 degrees on the nozzle, we're gonna go ahead and extrude another 100 millimeters. And we should get exactly 100. All right, once that's done, another flush cut. I'm going to take this to the ruler. Perfect. 100 millimeters. Bam. So as far as calibrating the extruder, you're completely done at this point. All you have to do is just reassemble the Bowden tube coupler onto the extruder and then feed your filament back through the Bowden tube and purge the nozzle. Then the next step we're gonna do is 3D print the uh, 100 millimeter calibration print that I've developed. I'm gonna put a link in the description to my Thingiverse profile and then you'll be able to download it there. Put it in your slicer. Create, use a profile that you're gonna use for all of your prints if you're running a 3D printing farm. It's a good idea to use the same profile on all printers. It's gonna make your life way easier. So whatever profile you decide to use, make sure that's the profile that you use for the calibration print. Uh, once you print it, then we're gonna take measurements and it's a lot of the same steps, uh, but the only thing that's gonna be a little bit different is uh, when you go to edit the notepad file, you are going to um, add the E steps for the X, Y, and Z. So um, again, we'll just 
print that test file, take the measurements, and then get the e-step values, and then update that. So we'll just run through that real quick. All right, so I just finished printing the uh, 100 millimeter calibration print. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is take measurements. The way I measure this, I like to put my calipers on the bed or on any level surface. And then I uh, just take the measurement just like that. So this one was actually right on, spot on. It was uh, 100 millimeters. Yep. Uh, just about 9, yep, 99.99. So I'm not going to change that value. Um, this was 80 E steps on my, um, on those uh, ratios. I'm going to keep it at 80. I'm happy with that. For the Y, I'm at 99.93. And then for the Z, I am at. Ninety nine point nine one. So we'll write that down and get some updated steps. Alright, so these are the values that I measured. My X was ninety nine point nine nine. I'm pretty happy with that. I consider that pretty much one hundred millimeters. The Y ninety nine point nine three, Z ninety nine point nine one, and we're using the same formula. Expected output divided by actual output. Since I'm not gonna change the X value, I consider that one hundred. Uh, we get 80 e steps. The default is already 80, so I'm not going to change that. The Y, however, came out to I need to update 80.05. I mean, it'll give me that extra 0.07. It's just something that I want to I want to have the most accurate possible. So I'm, I am going to update this value. And then for the Z, we're going to up uh, the Z by default is 400 e steps. So we're going to update this to 400.36. So we'll do the same thing, we'll, we'll go to the uh, SD card, we'll go to the computer, edit the G-code file, and I'll show you the commands that you need to type in, and it'll be the same process of uh, the same thing that we did for updating the uh, E-steps. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the computer uh, and create the G-code file for updating the extruder E-step value. All right, so once you insert your SD card, I went ahead and renamed the file that we had before. And uh, I've edited the information in it. So instead of M92E and then your extruder values, now you're going to put your X, Y, and Z E-step values that you calculated. So for me, my X, I'm going to keep the same. So I just kept it X80. You could actually just completely leave this out. But for educational purposes, I left it in there just in case you uh, need to update your X value. And then you put your Y value and your Z. Go ahead and save that. Um, and then insert into the printer. And we'll do the same thing on updating the values for X, Y, and Z. Now that we got the file saved on the SD card, we'll go ahead and insert it. Go to print, XYZ Calib, confirm, good to go. Um, then we'll go to motion, just double check. 80, we left that alone, 80.05, you're not gonna see the decimal place. And then, I don't know why this one said 400.2, but for sure I wrote down 400.36 on the uh, G code file. Uh, I guess we'll just run a test print, make sure that works. And then our e-steps kept stayed the same. So we'll go back, make sure we save it. Storage configuration is super important because if you turn off the printer without saving it, uh, it's going to erase. So now we'll go ahead and uh, print the 100 millimeter test print and then we'll check it and make sure everything's okay. So here's the test print all done with the new updated e-steps for X, Y, and Z. So we'll take a measurement and see how close we are. All right, for the X. Ninety-nine point nine eight. 
good enough for the Y. Seven. That's acceptable. And then the Z. Ninety-nine point nine eight. So I'd say that's pretty good print. Uh, all axes within point oh two, and we'll call this done. There's a couple things to note. Uh, if you noticed, you can actually go here and edit your e-steps and do the same thing. Um, and save it. But, you know, uh, I want to be as precise as I possibly can. So, you cannot edit the um, hundredth decimal on here you can only do a tenth so like this 80.0 I actually updated it to 80.05 and the only way you can really do that is if you execute a g-code command you can't do it from here but if you don't really care for the accuracy then just go ahead and do it here save the step of you know creating the g-code file or whatever just just do it from the display anyways guys I wanted to you know put this together and um, this video actually took me four days because I've been working crazy, crazy hours on my day job. Uh, I put in 100 hours a week for the past three weeks. Um, so uh, it's kind of rough. I try to make it short. This is my first time editing. Uh, so it's kind of rough. But like I said in my very first video, I'm going to try to get better. I really want to put out videos that are going to be of value to you and help you. And I want to educate you and everything that I have learned by running this 3D printing farm. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, just please comment and then uh, I'll answer your questions as best as I can. Thanks for watching.